Ahnath ibn Qais, rahimahullah ta'ala, who's one of the greatest of the tabi'een of the second generation, he tells a very beautiful story. He says that one time I entered into Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem, and he said, I saw this man that was praying all night, wa huwa yukthiru sujood and all he would do is prostrate, or, or he would spend so much time in his prostration. And so he said that I'm watching him and SubhanAllah, he'd go into his prostration and you wouldn't know if he was gonna come out or not, okay? So he said that he keeps on doing prostration, he keeps on doing sajda over and over and over again. He said, until I went to the man and I said, do you even know how many rak'ahs you've prayed? And what he means by that is that, you know, when you go into sujood for so long, you're likely to forget which rak'ah you're on, right? So he's like, do you even know whether you've prayed an odd amount of rak'ahs or an even amount of rak'ahs? Do you even know, you know, what rak'ah you're on? Because you've been in sujood so long in each one of these these rak'ahs. So the man responded with a beautiful response. He says, In kuntu la adri, fallahu yadri. He said, If I don't know, then Allah knows. <laughs> Meaning, if I made a mistake because of the length of my sujood in you know in how many rak'ahs I've prayed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Then the man said, Hadathani hubbi. He said, My beloved one told me, and he broke down crying. So Ahnaf rahimullah says that he started to collect himself once again. Haddathani hubbi. He said once again, my beloved one told me. Without telling him who his beloved one is or what he told him, he just says, Haddathani hubbi. And he breaks down crying. Then Ahnaf, rahimullah says, I started to console him. And he said, finally, he collected himself and he says, Haddathani hubbi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that my beloved one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told me, Innaka ma sajatta lillahi sajda, that you do not make a sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not make a single prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Illa rafa'aka Allahu biha daraja. Except that Allah increases you as a result of it by one degree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with each one of those sajdas removes one of your sins. Ahnaf rahimahullah said that I said to the man, Man ant, who are you? Because he didn't realize he was a companion. So the man says, I am Abu Dharr al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the companion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the beauty of sajda, the beauty of sujood, this ummah is the ummah of sujood. It was the favorite position of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was the position that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would go into when he was in gratitude. It was the position that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in fact went into at times so much that some of his companions thought that he died. It is the best position in the salah. Ibn al-Qayyib rahimahullah says very beautifully that within a rak'ah of prayer, within your set of prayer, the entire salah is an introduction to the sujood. Like you're standing up, you're Allahu Akbar, you're ruku'ah, you're bowing. All of it is this introduction to your sujood. It's the best place to make dua. It's the closest you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you imagine with shaitan, he refused to do sujood to Adam alayhi salam. What about you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah praised al-raki'oon as-sajidun. He praised them by calling them by al-raki'oon, the believers by those who bow and those who prostrate. And the Prophet sallallahu says that it is the closest you can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aqrabu ma yakunu al-abdu li rabbihi. The closest you can, the servant can be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his sujood. There's a beautiful statement that, you know, it's amazing that you whisper into the earth and the one above the heavens hears you, subhanAllah. And that's how you get closest to him. Why? Because the more you lower your body, the more your soul ascends. So it's the closest you get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sujood is also the way to be closest to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. We, we take that from the hadith of Rabi'ah ibn Ka'b al-Aslami radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was one of the, the people of Sufa, one of the poor young men that used to serve the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, sell me, go ahead and ask me for anything. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I just want your companionship. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, then support me in doing so by, by achieving that goal, bi kathratis sujood, by increasing in the number of prostrations that you do. And, and kathratis sujood doesn't just mean the number of prostrations you do, but the amount of time that you spend in sajda. So it's the way to get closest to the Prophet Sallallahu in the hereafter. It's also the greatest way to die. One of my heroes, uh, Shaykh Kishk rahimahullah, Shaykh Abdul Hamid Kishk rahimahullah ta'ala, not, in, not from the tabi'een or the salaf, but actually in 1996. He used to make a dua, Oh Allah, allow me to live as an imam, to die as an imam, and to be raised up on the day of judgment in sajda, in prostration. Because the Prophet ﷺ said that you will be raised the way that you used to, or, or you will be raised up on the day of judgment doing what you last did in this world. He used to make this du'a on the manbar, subhanAllah. He used to make this du'a on the pulpit. And he died in his sujood on the day of Friday as an imam, subhanAllah. Right? The truthfulness in your dua. We know that it's the greatest way that you can die because the Sahaba used to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to die in sajda. 
right? And the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned uh, a man who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hundreds of years and then died in his sajda, which is an ishara, it's a sign that that's the best way that you can die. The masjid, the mosque, the houses of Allah are named after a sujud because masjid means the place of sujud. And Imam ibn al Qayyim rahimahullah says, in fact, every single nation that came before in their legislation of salah, in the prayer that was given to them, they had sujud, they had the component of prostration in their prayer. Right, there might have been differences in the mechanics and the way that they prayed and what they recited, but all of them had prostration. You can even find it in the Bible with Isa, Islam, with Jesus, peace be upon him, and so many of the other prophets. They all had the attribute of prostration. And on the day of judgment, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Because if this is a standard, if this is something that happened with all of the believers, then on the day of judgment, that means that this is a standard that all of the believers will be held by. Which is why on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ يُكْشَفُ عَنْ سَاقُ وَيُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السُّجُودِ فَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ when the shin is laid bare, when people would see some of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would command the people to make sujood, or He wouldn't even command them. I mean, you know, they would naturally fall into sujood. SubhanAllah, even as they're called, they would naturally fall into sujood. They used to do sujood to Allah without even seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how is it now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposes some of Himself in a way that befits him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُدْعَوْنَ إِلَى السجود, That some people would fall into prostration. The believers, the Prophet sallallahu said, would fall into prostration. But the hypocrites and the disbelievers would find that their backs would become straight, like an iron rod. They can't make sujood. Right? And it's a horrifying uh, you know, situation to be in that you cannot make sujood. Why? They used to be called to sajda, they used to be called to prostration even as they were healthy and they had no issues. So it is the, the, the standard on the day of judgment. That's the distinguishing factor. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the people of faith would be known by the marks of sujood on their foreheads. And that mark of sujood on your forehead the Prophet ﷺ said, even the people, because there will be some believers that will go to hellfire for some time, and they'd spend some time there for some transgressions that they committed. But the Prophet ﷺ said, the fire cannot consume the place of sujood that's on your face. Allahu Akbar. The fire can consume the rest of your body, but it can't consume that, the place of your sajda. And subhanAllah, even the earth. We spoke earlier about how the earth cries and what that means when we say the earth cries. What does the earth cry about? The earth cries, you know, the part of the earth that you used to do sujood on, cries when you pass away because it will miss the effect of that sajda. It will miss the effect of that prostration. So it is, you know, it is the greatest honor to the earth even that you do sajda upon it. And subhanAllah, we find that honor is not just with sujood to Allah in this world, but even in the next, because we find with the Prophet Sallallahu in his greatest maqam, al-shafa'a al-uzna, which is the great intercession of the Prophet Sallallahu when he intercedes on behalf of mankind, the Prophet Sallallahu will do so in a state of sujood. He will greet Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in a state of prostration. So prostration is special. And you know, one of my favorite books to read is the autobiography of Malcolm X Rahimahullah Ta'ala, another hero, Malcolm X and Hajj Malik al-Shabazz. Malcolm Rahimahullah, he actually talks about when he was learning the actual prayer, how difficult the sajda was, how difficult the prostration was. Because, you know, it's such a humbling experience. But he came, you know, and he'd been beat down his entire life. So it, it really, you have to really fight with your ego to be able to make sajda. And Malcolm was a proud man in a good way. Malcolm was a proud man, rahimahullah ta'ala. So he found it difficult to make sujood. But Malcolm, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says that when he made sajda to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, when he realized that prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not, not only is it not humiliating, it's actually liberating, it's actually empowering, it's actually dignifies you, right? So they never wanted to get up. And so subhanAllah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to increase in our sajda in this world. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to die in our sajda and to allow us to be raised up in a state of sajda.